before I talk, I have a little camel clock that I need some help on. Now, before I pull the clock over, I wanted to show you show you this interesting label. This is a it's a brick of tea from Tibet. And if I can get in here to show you. It's a really interesting label. But it has a little little caravan scene there. And if you really look at it, you'll see those camels. And you see how thick the fur is around their necks, like this one here. See how thick the wool, or it's not wool, but the camel hair, really thick. The reason I mention that is because is because in researching trying to find out more about this porcelain or china I don't know what it's made out of camel clock I started thinking why what's the difference between a camel with one hump or with two humps and I happen to remember the camels on this in my tea in the crock where I store all my tea cakes I remember this one and the camel with the with all the hair like this one those are Bactrian Bactrian camels or Bactrian camels and they are from eastern China and the steppes of Mongolia and the reason they have that that hair, that extra hair, and plus they have the two humps. All that hair is because it gets very cold where they live, and so they have the hair. It protects them when the, when the snow is out, and then when the snow is gone, the hair falls off, and now they can endure the temperatures up to about 104 Fahrenheit. But this camel. A single one hump camel, that's what most of the camels in the world are. 90, they say 94% of the camels in the world are dromedary one hump, which, which are the one hump camels. And they don't have any of that big fur that falls off like the uh, Bactrian camels do. And believe it or not, and this, and this type of camel, that's the one you'll find in the Middle East, uh, North Africa, and so forth. And they also, because I know people are interested in camels, yes, they actually have, of all places, Australia, they have more than 700,000 wild camels. They were brought there years ago, and then they were just left, and they increasing at a rate of 8% every year to the point where sheep farmers are threatened because they're they're eating all the edible foliage <laughs> and one more interesting thing about the Bactrian camel is that oh the the camel's hump that doesn't have water in it that's a, those are actually stores of fat and as the camel goes long times without eating he start his body starts consuming the fat that's in the hump and then event, and the and the hump actually gets smaller and even lopsided and then when the camel is hungry again or he can get to a place where he can eat the fat stores are replenished and the and the humps rise to their prominence again and what's wild is that when the Bactrian camel drinks water he can drink up to 32 gallons at one time that's just 32 gallons of water. Anyhow, I was very amazed and interested, and I'm sure that all my viewers were in, are interested as well. Anyhow, this clock, this interesting clock, try not to bang it on my bandsaw table.
This was sold as a vintage clock, not as an antique. And I saw it, and while I like the design and the look of it, the little clock that's in there is an antique. It's a New Haven One Day Movement, which is like this, these other ones that I showed you. Like this one, that's a New Haven One Day Movement that they put in the novelty clocks and those are from before 1927 now this on the bottom on the bottom of the clock it says it says Germany 8355 right down there I don't know if you can it's hard to see it says Germany now it's possible now when these these were made. I've I've seen other uh, designs made in the same style with the same features, eyes, and so forth. That it's unmistakable. It's the same. They have different different scenes, and the clock. Sometimes they have a German movement, one day German movement in here. But I'm wondering if they were sold without the clock to American. Uh, clock makers and they put the clock and the little clock in and sold them in their uh, clock lines I don't know it's possible but I still don't know when it was made the ceramic part now if you know please let me know I've I've been looking at related porcelain figurines that look very similar because look at the eyes. They're kind of narrow eyes. And the features are unmistakable. And this might be Dresden from Dresden, Germany. Uh, they call it Dresden porcelain or something like that. I'm Again, I'm no expert. But it's definitely pre-World War II because Dresden was absolutely decimated from Allied fire bombs in World War II. All the factories in that city were destroyed. In fact, they, they estimate 186,000 people died. So I don't know if this is Dresden and maybe they rebuilt after the war and started making, I don't know if they were making things after the war, but it does look like that Dresden porcelain or China, which I've, which I've seen. Again, it's just a one-day uh, wind-up movement. So, or it could be modern. It could be within the last 20 years. What do I know? I'm no expert on the, the uh, porcelain or china. But I like the way it looks. And that got me to, interested to research the uh, one or two hump camel. You know, you have all these mysteries related to clocks that I don't know how you find out the information. So if someone out there knows, please leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. All right, well, I guess that's about it. And I appreciate everyone who takes their precious time to watch my channel because there's probably a million things on YouTube that you can be watching. And for a person to want to take the time to watch what I'm presenting here, I appreciate it. So, once again, I hope everyone is safe and well and stays that way. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.